Hey guys, welcome back to part four of the FAA Hellcat. And in this one, I'm going to start off by admitting I've made a mistake and someone's caught me out. Um, basically, I sprayed the interior of both models, here's the US Navy one, with interior green. Now, uh, a guy called Peter Wilstein, Peter Pools on the uh, forums, has raised the point with me that and his, he's done a bit of research and he thinks that all of the interior of the fuselage should be zinc chromate yellow now that got me to have a look because Peter's a pretty cool guy and he knows his stuff so I thought I'd have a look and I did some more research this morning and I found a document on large-scale planes that basically describes the colors that were used on these aircraft and the way I read it before was that everything was interior green no the cockpit is interior green okay the wing section it looks like could be interior green or yellow and the engine bay and everything all the hydraulics and all that around there that could have been interior green or yellow but the actual cockpit was zinc chrome the uh, cockpit the actual fuselage from the main bulkhead back was actually zinc chromate yellow now this area here that's debatable um the us navy and the fleet air arm both said that any exposed area of the aircraft will be the color of the aircraft so basically all the FAA would have been sky so all the undercarriage bays the wing folds and everything would be sky yeah but the undercarriage bay at the rear who knows so I'm gonna say this is exposed so I'm gonna say that's gonna be sky color in there the US Navy one will be dark blue as would all the wheel bays and everything in the wing folds but certainly the actual rear part of the fuselage is zinc chromate yellow so I've now sprayed it green so what am I going to do I am going to now we've got to do these bits as well I'm going to now start to do some pre-shading over this and then spray the yellow one over that and see how it looks so let me just get myself prepared and then I'll come back right so here I've got some Tamiya XF27 oh and by the way while I think of it I've changed the position of the mic um, I've noticed I've just recorded part A of the uh, US Navy version and I've got a lot of popping and cracking and the other thing I'm getting I don't know if anyone can help me with this or why it happens maybe it's iPhone related but um, I can film a section now and the volume maybe like it is now and then stop the camera turn it on again and I can hardly hear myself and then the next one I'm blowing my face off it's, it's crazy you know I speak at the same volume the camera's not moving all I'm doing is switching the camera on and off so I, I don't know what's going on so basically this black green here I'm going to check my flow I've got it thin with 50% water and 50% alcohol so that's not yeah it I've got a bottle of 50% water 50% alcohol and I've mixed it 50% with the paint so um basically I'm just going to highlight the areas that I want to um just make look darker and I'll just show through the um the zinc room and getting tip dry again here but it's because it's so warm here we go I'm have to put it on heavily so um just gonna layer layer and layer over here like so and then that will shine through the yellow and look good I mean none of this is really going to be seen anyway truth be told so it doesn't really matter just put some on there to give it a bit of effect The only thing I'm wondering if anybody knows is what are these holes here for? But one that side and one that side. There's nothing that goes in them. This one's even got a great big lug around it. It's, I don't know what they're for. It's very strange. So I think I actually had some dry paint in the end of the airbrush. So that's that done. Now I'm going to go on and do the US Navy one now while I've got the paint mixed here. So I'll come back with you in a second with the FAA version. Right. So I've got here is Tamiya XF4, which is uh, it's called dark yellow and I think it's called dark yellow 
No, it's not. It's called yellow green. Sorry, dark yellow is excess 60, isn't it? Um, yeah, yellow green, and it's thinned about 70% water and alcohol with paint. Um, if I get any issues here, I just have to live with it. It's so here we go, laying the paint on, just letting the pre-shading show through, letting the green show through. And we're going to come in from this angle just lightly and there we go we can see we've got a, a kind of an effect like you say this has one of, one of the uh, one of my followers commented I think it was Gary you know it's it's an artistic effect you do and it's you're using the plastic as a canvas it's it's not you know if we if we just painted that as it would be on the red aircraft it would just look fake because it would have no depth to it so I do the same on here and all I'm trying to do is just give this a, a yellowy green colour to it that's all I want to do and if I want to go in with some post shading afterwards I can brighten things up a little bit after all it is going to be a, a dark area so make sure you get the bottom area of that as well and just come in from the back and just make sure we get the, uh, the angles in there and there we go so that's that done so once again now I can get on with the uh, US Navy when I get that one painted and there we go finally um, so that was a very very thin mix of Tamiya XF4 sprayed over um, didn't really like it that much so I made up a slightly thicker mix of XF4 went over it and still didn't like it that much then I decided that what I would do is go over with some of the Mr. Color Zinc Chromate um, and that sort of blended in nicely with the other paint but it still didn't seem to pop so what I've done um, I've made up on Peter's recommendation again um, see I do listen to you guys um, XF4 with a drop of yellow in it and then what I've done is gone in between all the panels and, um, and highlighted them so you can see here that you know you get that lovely sort of effect now I'm more concerned with this one in this area than I am with these because you can't really see anything anyway and I know this is the FAA build guys but um hey um so yeah that's um that's a that's quite a like nice, nice look I think with the pre-shading coming through so I'll let these dry now and then I'll give them I'll mask off these just quit the paint out of these grooves mask them off and then I'll give it a good coat of aqua gloss to seal it and then um, after a few hours then I can give it a, 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 a bit of a wash just to sort of make it pop really and um, you can see that little structure there looks nice when it's uh, highlighted and stuff so I just try and improve it with, with shadowing and just trying to add some depth to it really rather than just having it as a, a yellow blob of plastic and really you can't see much up in there at all anyway if, if you look at it like this I mean I know this is the wrong half but I've got the all these bits on this half and I don't want to snap them off but if we look up in there you know you can't really see a lot anyway up in there so you know it's really the fun of modeling rather than the end result here that matters so um I need to get these these seams scraped out now get it all coated give, give it a cut of aqua gloss let it go off and get on with something else okay so <clears throat> I've done that now masked off scraped out all the paint out of all the grooves masked them all off also done this one up here ready for when the cockpit is painted and um, yeah we're good to go also gone round and this isn't the FAA one but gone around the outside of these bulkheads and stuff and taped them up and also done this area here on the on the US Navy one so now we're good to go and sort of get a, a, a clear gloss coat on there ready for our weathering so I'm going to do that now and then what we'll do is we'll going to build something on this FAA model because um, it's all a bit bitty at the moment right so there we go that's those gloss coated and they can all uh, dry now it's all just part of the um, the whole thing with painting I've gloss coated that as well and it's just to sort of um, protect the paint uh, for when you add a wash and the other thing is especially if you're like using flory washes um, if you want a really really dirty grimy filthy look then don't gloss coat it put the flory wash on and then hardly any of it will rub off and you end up with a really dirty filthy look 
um, if you just want to do a highlight like with weathering like um, just a wash with oils or whatever and you want the oils to go into the into the corners put a gloss coat on this you can see the texture of the plastic here the, te the plastic's got a a fairly rough texture to it so you can see the texture of the plastic coming through the paint there um, this is probably going to cause us an issue on the outside I, I don't really know it's, it's not as rough on the outside as it is on the inside I don't think so um, yeah um, so there we go I'm gonna let that dry now and it's um, as I say it's Sunday the, uh, the 30th of June 2019 and it's just coming up to 3 p.m. so I'm gonna go and watch a documentary about the Hellcat on the Smithsonian channel. See you in a minute. All right, guys. So you've probably already seen part six of the um, U.S. Navy Hellcat build, where I built up this wing center section. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about stuff. But if you remember, in that one, I cut away this um, this leg of plastic here, which is this part. Uh, after I assembled it, on this one I've decided to do it first. So, and I know that we had about a tenth out gap in here where it meets the um, where it meets the back of the uh, the uh, wing spar there so I've I've cut this piece off I've glued some 10 thou plastic card there to fill out that gap and then in here this end of the uh, this end of the part doesn't fit that well so and it's one millimeter thick so I've cut two bits of one mil plastic card and now they're glued in there and when they're all set and cured I can trim them back and sand them and um, they're just a better fit there's not so many gaps in them and stuff so uh, that's basically going to butt up against the the, the, the main spar. Um, so that's those bits taken care of. Now these here, I did explain in my original video that they actually need some trimming. Um, this one's trimmed. You can see the difference if I show you there. You can probably see the difference in those in those triangular bits. You need to um, basically take a knife and just cut down the back. And take about I don't know half a millimeter away from the back of the triangular section like so and then you also need to sand something away from the from the bottom not too much and then that will fit in there then and you also need to make sure it goes it sits basically in these radiuses here so or radii should I say so you need to make sure it's sitting down and not too high and I'm going to make sure it's pushed down into the groove yeah, and you see I've still got to take some more off now the other thing is I may need to thin it down because it's not um I don't think it's sitting in the groove properly it's uh it's actually for for such a small sort of unimportant part it's a very very poor fit um, doesn't go together well at all this bit so I'll sand some more off the bottom I'll just run a sander around the sides and just check make sure it's right around yes the angle the angle then goes forward so it's sat down in the groove now yeah it could still do with a tiny bit more off because it's it's just you can see there it's rocking I just push that triangular part down into its groove where it's supposed to sit you can see it's just rocking so I'm just going to take a touch more off just a touch and that should do me like so and now that fits in lovely so um, I can get these cleaned up, get them glued in. I can use ordinary Tamiya Extra Thin and I'm just going to put some in that centre just to hold it there and then a bit down in there. I'll just hold that in place for now and I'll do the same on the other side I've already trimmed this one up so I know this one fits make sure it's down in the groove get me extra thin And 
there's that one in as well and if you remember if you have watched part six what I'm doing here is I'm building this one I've already built the other one and I'm going to see which one looks the best in this area and then the one that looks the best in this area will be the folded wing version which will be the FAA aircraft so I'm just going to get a peg and peg that down I'll do the same on this end because this is all flexible here so you need to make sure you um, you peg it all into place and if it does need any tweaking afterwards then it's only plastic after all it'll it'll, uh, it'll give if it needs to and then just one more peg on here and just leave that for a few minutes just to just to gel and what we're making is this this here this this structure and you can see here where I've added the 10 thou card and you can see how poor the fit of those parts is so I've had to put Mr Surfacer in there so um here we'll see how this one comes out in comparison to that one and the one with the best area around here as I say will be the one with the folded wings right um with this main spar if you've watched part six this is the assembly here going together the two parts um, I had some issues with uh, getting this together it was like they were sitting too far apart and there's ejector pin marks all over the inside so you need to make sure they're all sanded nice and flat now this one seems to go together better um, which is crazy because they come from the same mold so I must have done something wrong on the other one now what I did with the other one I tried to thin everything down to get it to go together to get rid of this this step here in the top what I've decided to do on this one is not do anything and just see how it goes together out of the box so what I've done I've got elastic bands here to keep it all together that way to keep this piece up against that lip there and these clamps are keeping it together that way and then what I'm going to do in fact I will use the quick setting I think on this I'm going to put some cement in these slots here and it's going to get wicked away straight away because there's so much surface area under here I'm just going to keep putting the glue in until I see a puddle form really there you go now I know it's in there and it's going to be all solid now I can leave that to go off for a while I can afford to put some along here this is the member that's going to be taking the undercarriage and the wings um, this this has got quite a bit of work to do this, this part I'm just going to glue that like that and then I can also glue these ends here and then just get a little peg on them or something just to hold them together like so and the idea is just to try and get it to sort of stay together on its own once these rubber bands and clamps are removed and then we can glue the rest of it so the other one I did end up with a slight this one this side was slightly dropped so I've actually cleaned out the top of that hole and then sanded and everything to make it both sides the same but it was quite a bit of work so um, this one I've decided not to try and make it sink in deeper It'd be a lot less work to get rid of that step than it would be to um, to try and uh, do all the work I did before so there we go so that's that one like that um, so now I'm just leaving everything to dry now I'm leaving these to dry on here and I'm leaving that to dry there okay um, it's all sort of coming together now we've got everything uh, all sort of cleaned up and clamped and Mr Surfacer and I'm just waiting for that to dry now as usual um, something I have noticed in my meanderings um, this here this um, plastic shape there I thought it was some sort of stiffening brace but it's not it's depicting four little hydraulic pipes so they're sort of solid lumps of plastic I think it's a bit late to do anything on this one now I may, I may see if I can get in there with a the chisel and, and, and do it but with this one because it's still apart I've been able to you can see that 
this is um, this is that part there. Okay, so I've removed the the, the sort of L-shaped leg from this. Okay, and left the the, the lump behind. And then this is that part there. Sorry, upside down. This is that part there. And what I've done, I've removed. You can see there's like um like a, a leg on there. I've removed that and just left a little nub behind. Made it into like a nut shape, and then gone over with some Mr. S um some extra thin just to clean it up a bit. What I'm going to do now is mark them out, drill them out, and um put some 0.5 copper wire in there. Uh, 0.5 would make them 12 mil, probably a bit big. They'd probably be about 8 mil in reality. So that would be 0.3, which would be, you'd hardly see them. So I'm going to go 0 0.5, I think. And um, we'll see how that looks when I, when I start to get them bent up. All right, so um, <clears throat> I've drilled all my holes. You can see the holes all drilled in there now. Uh, these holes here, I had to um, cut the lugs off because they were so soft. The drill was just making them uh, fall apart. So basically, I've got my lead here now. So I'm just going to cut eight lengths about the same I've got that I one two three four five seven a little bit more this is 0.5 lead wire from uh, little cars and, um, there we go Extra couple for luck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just in case I drop any. So, a little tip for you guys: if you want your lead or copper or whatever to be dead straight, what you do is you take, you lay them out like that on the bench, and then you take a rule, and if you roll your rule over them, they'll go dead straight. So there's a little tip for you. So what I'm going to do now is get some super glue in my little um, Pringles lid. Nope, don't want the thin one, the ordinary one. Just put a drop there, and then one by one, I shall take these. Just take some super glue on the end, and then just push them into those holes like so, like that. That's that one done. Take another one. I've got them dead straight, it doesn't matter if they get bent. So. And then the next one. Grab a tweezers now. I can't feel them actually going into the hole, so I'm a bit dubious. As I say, bending them doesn't really matter because we're going to be bending them into shape anyway. One of the issues, one of the problems with lead, if you use tweezers and you pinch it a little bit hard, it puts a flat spot on it and it looks awful. So they're all in there like that now. So I could do the same on the other side and then I'll come back. Okay, so now they're all glued in, I'm just going to bend them up at right angles and I'm going to use the edge of this square plastic pad here. There's a square plastic pad there. So what I'm going to do is just line my rule up with that, push down and I can just grab each piece of lead, just bend it up like so and then I can take my tweezers, just give them a little, little prod, get them all the same so they're all bent up at roughly the same angle. As I say, it's all going to move about. So when you um, 
when you've got it all finely together and it's ready for paint and primer then you can give it a uh, a proper little um, poke around there and I've got a feeling that one there is not yeah that's not glued properly thought not so I just get the glue off the end of that in fact what I'll do is I'll cut it in fact I'll use another piece um, let's grab my drill 0.55 drill just going to make sure that's opened out okay one of the issues with, with super glue is when you push parts in if there's super glue on the part sometimes it cures and, and just sets a second it touches the edge so it doesn't actually go in but generally as you saw then you can feel it straight away because the part will be the, the lead will be quite floppy now I think that's gone in that time yeah if I give it a tug it certainly uh, now I should be able to grab that and bend that the same as the others there we go So they're all pretty parallel now. Like I said, that's what we're aiming for. So we'll do the same on the other side. Put the rule level at the edge of that block. And just come along and lift them all up. So there we go, they're all at right angles now. And that one doesn't feel glued. Nope. So I'll just put some glue on it and push it in. Another little tip, guys, it's sometimes better to use super glue, which is a little bit older and just going off it tends to slow it down it's drying usually when it's brand new it's like bang dry but as it gets older one of the ways of telling when it's wearing out as it were um, it tends to take longer to dry but you can use that to your advantage as long as it still works there we go that's all solid now so that's all in so now we need to bend them so that they do 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 which one's this this is the right side so they line up with those holes there so those holes there are just above that so if I get that rule again and I put that rule here that's I use the wider one and then make sure they're pushed down There we go, we got the the second angle in them now. Just get them all straight. And then do the same on this side. Make sure they're all down. And then just push them over. And there we go so now we can trim them off and I am going to use my knife and initially trim them off here just trim them off to the edge of this lump of plastic now is that going to be too long just lift them up that's what we're aiming for guys if you look there okay you may not want to do this I mean it's a you may consider it to be a pretty pointless exercise but um okay so to enable us to slide this down in I'm going to hold this at an angle 
and they're going to come in my little Tamiya cutters and just nip. Nip the ends of the lead away so that I can slide that in. And then when it's all together, I'll be able to manipulate that and get it into those holes. So there we go. So I know that's going to work. There we are. And then basically when that goes in those holes, I just get it all straightened up. I think you'll agree when you compare, it looks a little bit better, doesn't it? <laughs> Looks just a little bit better than the plastic. I'd be great there if I put something in there, but uh, it can always be improved upon. So I'll just slide that apart and they can just sit there now ready for the assembly. Now what I might well may well do is put some brass tubing in here as I said earlier and uh, have that as like the, the, the bulkhead nuts. That's what this is. This is a 90 degree bulkhead fitting that's depicting. That's why I've left those little lumps of plastic on there. And then just so you can see, I'll do the same on the other side. I'll tip this over as far as it will go. And then I'll take my Tamiya cutters and just cut these off to the same length. Like that. So when I come over and it's all squared up, I can lean them over and they'll fit beautifully. And that is the beauty of using lead over the copper is it is so manipulable manipulative no it's not manipulative is it valuable positionable I don't know there we go so that's that's how to make your detailed piping and uh, that applies to sort of every model you ever build and in every position engines whatever um, You'll see me use wire and cable and stuff a lot whenever I uh, do a bit of extra detailing. So um, I don't know quite what I'm going to do with this side yet. I might just do a simpler version of it. We'll see. Um, I may even just drill down through there and then fill the holes, fill the, the gap between the parts. We shall see. So there we go. Right, it's, um, it's Sunday night now and I'm going to go and watch some TV. So uh, leave all this to dry, let us Mr. Service to dry off and then we can rub that down tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow and I'll get some more done on the um, the other Hellcat as well. Um, I guess really I need to do some of your build along stuff as well, don't I? But I'm enjoying this thing so much, it's, um, well both of them. It's uh, it's really nice model, really enjoying it. Right, good morning everyone. It's now uh, Monday the 1st of July, so uh, we're due a bench update, aren't we? Um, Okay, so still on this um, on this Hellcat, and basically it's now the morning after. Obviously, these have all dried off now, and I've actually done this one as well. Um, th this was not so tidy, but you know it still looks better than that plastic lump, I think, with the um, with the pipes in there. So a bit of a clean up. I've got a feeling this one's going to end up being the um, the wings out version because with this not being so tidy obviously with the lighter color in here and the wash and everything it's going to look a lot worse um, than than if it was in glossy blue because it'll just be so dark you hardly see it so um let's let's have a look and see how this one turns out anyway so what they suggested in the instructions now is you glue these two in and then glue this this spar across the top um having now been experienced with building these i would suggest a different build sequence what I'm going to do is put this spar over the top of here, okay, and then the same on the other side. Reason being, when you put these in like this, what the tender is to put them in and glue them, yeah? And what you've got to do is hold it in place and clamp all this up and everything, and you can't do it because it all wants to just fall around. So if you do it like this, then basically the spar, well, they're basically going to support each other. So you can drop those hooks through those holes down there. And then that'll go together like that. Then 
you can kind of just you need to sort of basically just get something clamped or, or tacked into place so what I'm going to do is just put some quick setting in the back of the spar here just a couple of drops just to hold that in place and if you notice I'm gluing areas that won't be seen because you see this glue oozing out here that's what I don't want invisible areas so I could just rub the finger on there get rid of that okay so that should be pretty much welded into place I may as well glue the center as well because because it's not going to go anywhere is it just put that down push down Most need to remember guys as well it's really important to protect those hooks you can see how vulnerable they are and how light they are to get caught on something get broken off so be very careful now this is where the I think this is this is I haven't tried this I think this is where the upper wing is going to come in handy because the upper wing is almost like a skin if you saw my other build you'll see that when you put this upper wing on you kind of have to pull it over and stretch it over everything it's almost like it's been made too flat um, purposely <laughs> I don't know but um, this will then pop over here there we go and now that holds everything in place so I can stick a peg on the back of there and hold that down like so off with a bulldog clip yeah there we go so that's all holding place now you see now the bottom wing is being pulled up and the upper wing is being pulled down but at the same time we've got everything being pulled together so what I can do now is glue the bottom edge of that without getting any glue on the top leave that to set and once that's set I can take the top off okay so they're glued together now and everything's untaped. I've put one piece of tape over those hooks for now for fear that if I get any glue dripped in there it'll capillary under and just ruin everything. So I've just got that one piece on there. And I've gone around the inside with some extra thin now and glued it all in nice and solid. Remember this needs to be extremely strong. This is your um your backbone if you like or the the the, the, the spine of your um of your model. Everything sits on this. So um we've got gaps so just underneath where I've put this lead tube and we've got a gap down in here you can see down in there so I'm going to fill that and this one here isn't really a problem because it's inside a box section we can look on this one and you can see on this one that it's um it's pretty much all hidden away in there inside there so um what I'm going to do is I've cut some uh, yeah you guessed it 10 thou plastic card so what I've got is two this is these are two mil wide and these are about four and a half mil wide and then what these do this part here I just pick it up for a start this will slot into the bottom like so, so just give that a nudge that wedges in there and then I just put a tiny tiny drop of extra thin on the front face only not on the back Okay, and then just push it into position and then I can come in with my number 10 yeah I always get 10 and 10 a confused number 10 blade just come in there and just chop that and I should be able to just peel it away I'm very conscious here I don't want to cut those um, those bits of lead Ready guys, sorry I had to turn the camera off there because it was just going pear shaped. But basically all I've done is got these pieces of plastic card like this, wedged them in there, cut them off. Now this is a, um, I modified a blade a while back on that Lancaster where the um, Bombay was absolutely plastered in the ejector pin marks. So I made this little tool up to get in there and just cut them out. 
and uh, it's also a very handy little tool you, you can buy a swab mortar blade like this um, and it just you can basically just push down and I'll show you how it works just push down and you can chop chop things like that end on so it saves you having the risk of uh, rubbing your blade on stuff which is the problem I was going to have there so that's that done um, I'm going to let that go off maybe see if I can get something in there and just give it a little um, a little clean up I don't know um, but yeah then, then we'll connect those um, those lead wires up and then we're done so for now uh, for, for just now <laughs> keep this thing going uh, I'm going to fit this main spar and that's going to slot in like that okay here it click in and that's absolutely solid and now because I've taken those legs off of these I'd be able to slot these in afterwards like so and then glue them to the main spar and get them all square and everything so first of all I'm going to glue the main spar into place so what I want to do is really I need to clamp it all again to, again together again with that wing you see because this is this is the shape it wants to take so let me get that wing on again okay so I've done that clamped all that uh, clamp the back tape the front should I say and then what I've done is I've just glued the, the front edge glued up the uh, supports there on the sides and then that will all hold in position the other thing I need to do is glue these legs into place here so I'm just going to push that into place put some extra thin quick setting on there and then just grab a peg and clamp that into position and then do the same on the other side if you notice I'm holding it in place before I glue it and that way I don't get all that oozing issue there may be a little bit where it settles but um, it won't be piles of it pouring out okay so that's in place now so once again we can stop and wait for that to dry and as I change the build sequence I guess it's only fair that I show you how I'm doing this so if you remember these parts here they had these legs on the front which I cut off and they're designed to go in before the main spar I'm fitting them after uh, I've cut the legs off I've put a piece of 10 thou card on the front because there's a gap there so um, this is what this is all about guys I'm learning where the fit issues are so that you can uh, take action before you get there sort of thing you know um, I'm not trying to say I'm trying to be some kind of hero or something but it's uh, it's great that it's, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the first on YouTube that's doing all this and you can um, follow me because I know I've followed a hell of a lot of modelers on kits in the past and used their advice so uh, just paying it back if you like so right now this part here this leg has to sit just on the edge of this hole just on the edge of that hole there so just move it out of touch not that much like that make sure the back stays engaged that's got to sit just like that I mean it doesn't nothing really goes on it so it's not really serving any purpose other than appearance so um, you don't really need to worry about exact positioning and stuff and once it's all uh, buttoned up with the upper wing section on and everything even if it is out of square no one's ever going to notice just need to make sure that bottom edge is is parallel and uh, and there we go just make sure I've got this glued to the spar this is an extremely strong assembly now this is um, very very strong indeed now, I haven't glued the end of the wings here because I'm not sure if that's got to be glued up there or not um, I think it has because when you put the uppers on I think it pulls it all into place in fact what I will do because I'm that kind of guy I will put these in place now and we'll see you can hear them kind of squeeze and grind together and all this just clips into place beautifully oh this is this is beautiful plastic kit engineering airfix you've done a sterling job and uh, I think the designer's name was Chris well done mate really good there's been a couple of issues on the way but hey 
you know 600 parts or whatever it is you're going to get a couple of parts that have issues and some of the issues have probably been my fault so there we go so I'm, I'm, it does actually contact so I'm putting this wing on now again whoops I need to clip it into there first again here all squeeze and grind together pull the back down hold that in place and then just put some glue on here in the contact areas and that's that all done so we can wait for that to dry now and um, then we're going to put these little parts on here and then we can start thinking about our um, flaps but I'm not going to do that in this stage because I still haven't 100% decided which one's going to be which I think this is going to be the folded wing FAA and I think this one will be the glossy blue only because I think these pipes are a lot neater than those so they're not going to stand out so much when they're painted glossy blue um, these the, I think the uh, the sky color with the wash and everything is going to make them really pop so and I mean I think when you when you have the wings folded the wing goes up here and I think you could look in there and, and see so yeah you certainly better look down oh and by the way while I think of it these little protrusions here they're not a mistake they should be there what they are they're little um, signs that come up to show that the wings aren't locked so when the wings are locked they go down so if the wings are out and flying you won't see them uh, but if it's if the wings are actually folded then they'll be uh, sticking out so that's a good little touch from Airfix there um, same as with the Spitfires they have um, little signs that come up little log rods that come up to show when the flaps are down um, the or is it the end of carriage I can't remember now but basically with these um, it says in the in some of the reference I've got they were painted red for delivery but then painted orange in service I don't know um, I see absolutely no reason why the Navy US or UK would have changed the color from red to orange I see no reason whatsoever maybe someone else could tell me um, I could be completely wrong but that's the reference I read so yeah in fact if I could find a reference I'll show you now here we go guys this is the um, squadron signal publications number nine Hellcat walk around and here on page 22 we can see looking at the port wing we've got the uh, the protrusion sticking out there and it says is a red orange on service aircraft warning cylinder used to tell the pipe the wings are not locked in the spread position so um yeah <laughs> was the top of it blue or was the top of it red or orange there's a question for you okay then guys just to finish this video off we're going to go through fitting these these tubes in here which is uh, basically two parts per side so if we look in the instructions what it's telling us to do is with the wing that way round we're going to put this one F31 look at the way the step goes and look at the instructions on the way the step is see the step there and then what I'm going to do is with my tweezers well I don't need tweezers to start with I found the best way to do this is to get these two front parts okay get them in there first in fact put the top in no put the bottom in first that's right put that right through and then just the top will just pop in and then if you push those right through the back will just pop in like that and then you can pull it back out and that's got to sit on there and it's it, it's quite easy to do once you get it in there I, I played and played and played until I found the easiest way so I could show you guys but um it kind of once it's in it clips into place and it's, that's it it's held um, it's a really good design once you get your head around how to fit it so I guess there's another way they could have done it because it goes through that outer panel so they couldn't have um, got you to put this on first and this is actually the main support for the undercarriage leg I'm going to put some glue in there but make sure you stay away from that tape you don't want to put it underneath that tape so that goes in like that and then this outer leg which is this one here just literally pops into that hole there 
like so. Okay, so it's going to sit on the top of there and in that hole there in the main spar. And the fit is nothing short of wonderful. Okay, so that's that one in place. Let's do the other side. As I say, put the front legs in first, the bottom one in first, and the top one will just spring in. Push those through so the legs are sticking through into here, and then you can make that one go in like that. Okay, and that is the best way to fit those in. And I would thoroughly recommend doing all this before you do any painting because A you want nice strong joints you don't want paint in your glue joints and B you're going to destroy the paint when you put it together so I know some people like to paint parts before they put them together this I would suggest treat this assembly as an armor model build it paint it weather it and then this one just goes on the top the wrong way around this one just goes on the top like that and then the end of that tube will come down and go into that hole there and as I say the fit is just superb I'm going to make sure they're nice and strong because they're taking all the weight of the aircraft well the the leverage of the undercarriage leg so there we go now something that is a bit strange on this one I'm having issues with the way this pipe this tube fits on here it's very tight and it's trying to sort of you can see that one there is just bent down and I need to sort of just pull it back up and fix it in place really with a pin or something whereas on this one exactly the same parts we've got we've got room in there so I, I don't really know exactly what's going on but uh there we go that's the way it is so that's all that together that's those tubes in and as you can see that's a really lovely looking assembly I've got those pipes all connected in the back there now I've put some Mr Surfacer in I'll just quickly work around with the cotton bud afterwards to remove any edges but it's going to be weather to how this anyway um, I'll, I will show you some pictures eventually of a couple of pictures I found of these British Hellcats and by God they are beaten to death so um We'll call it a day for that one there guys um, one other quick thing in here was a fuel tank now obviously airfix haven't given us anything to portray the fuel tank so if you look through you're going to see daylight I'm not so sure you're going to be able to see through there but I think just in case what I'm going to do is get a piece of plastic card put in there and just paint it black um, so that we haven't got a we can't see through and it will sort of look like a something in there rather than just a hollow space okay so um, what I'll do is I'll measure all that up now and um, put something in there and, and then put a glue it in after it's painted black because all this is going to be painted either dark sea blue or um, sky color depending I also need to find out if this area here well this area here would have been sky wouldn't it uh, this here would have all been sky I'm guessing the inside of the wing fold might not be the inside of the wing fold might be zinc chromate I don't know so we'll have a look but all that undercarriage bay would have been sky just another quick tip before we go guys um, does this keep happening to you do you keep picking up your extra thin and the ring stays on the on the bottle yeah it's a pain isn't it right so let's get this one to come out okay so I managed to get it out again so what you do put the ring back in there okay just push it down with a pair of tweezers make sure it's seated and then I've got a pair of long nose pliers here and all I'm doing is grabbing this plastic rim in here okay and giving it a little twist in sort of three or four or five places or whatever and just basically slightly distorting it as you can see there okay I don't know if you can see it's just slightly distorted and then the ring won't come out it just stays on there all the time all right and if it does fall off all you need to do is go around again and just all I'm doing is give it a gentle twist I don't want to break anything I don't want to rip anything 
just gently deforming that plastic ring because after all it's only gravity that's making that thing fall out I did it on this one about three weeks ago and it's never fallen out since so I'm sure it works okay that's it then for part four isn't it part four of the FAA build and we've basically got our wing section together I'm 90% sure this is going to be the one for the folded wing sorry not that one this one um, this is the one I've just built um, because it's got nicer detail the other thing is when I did this one I went in and sanded out all the mold seams and that on here whereas I think what Airfix are doing is what you think is a mold seam is actually a designed in step to look like a like it's a clamped on flange or whatever a bolted on flange so this one I was a lot more careful with and did a lot cleaner job on cleaning it up so I'm sure this one will be the folded wing the FAA and this one will be the um, the wings out the uh, the US Navy one so watch this space so thanks for watching and I'll see you for part five and if you have subscribed already thank you very much if you haven't then please give me a like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you all very soon bye bye